if you're looking for a way to learn how to lucid dream, use your dreams to solve real world problems, practice skills, and spend an entire weekend learning from dream work experts, you should join us in North Carolina on the weekend of November 3rd. Spend a weekend really taking your dreams seriously. Get actual results that you can apply to your life. If you know your dreams are trying to tell you something, join us and really analyze them. Fully immerse yourself in this experience because sharing dreams with the community of people that care is really important. That's why I've been putting on different events just to normalize dream sharing and keep the conversation going. Which leads me to today's episode, which is a collaboration with the Young and the Restless podcast. They're a dream interpretation podcast trio, and I'm honored to break down one of my dreams as well as talk a little bit about lucid dreaming and dream control. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm excited to talk to you guys. I want to first do like little intros so we can kind of like know where we're everybody everyone's experience and I want, I'm interested to know how you guys got into dreams and started your podcast so yeah I'm Amina I started this podcast the dream world podcast in co- during COVID times just because I've always loved dreams I've always thought consciousness was like super fascinating um and that kind of stuff and then during COVID I was like let's just why is nobody talking about this like dreams are so cool so I just started you know talking about it I've always been a lucid dreamer so that's kind of like my main focus and like what I teach people Um, But I love how there's so many fields within dream work, you know, especially other people that do dream podcasts like y'all, because um, I think it's so important to like talk about dreams, normalize sharing your dreams. Um, Yeah, I'm really excited always to meet other people that have the same goals. Awesome. Thank you for having us. It's really cool to connect with other people in the dream space because this is all very new to us. And I'm Olivia, by the way, I'm one third of the young and the restless. Speaking for myself, I definitely have just kind of stumbled into dream work. I've always been a vivid dreamer, um, but I don't think I really knew that there was so much there to dig into and that it was actually truly a reflection of what's going on with you at any given moment. So yeah, starting this podcast just in the last, what, it's maybe been like a year and a half since we started working on this. Yeah, it's just been kind of a process of discovering how much is actually there. Also, like a lot of self-reflection and just kind of, it's been very interesting to dig deep in a way that I didn't know I could, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm Victor. I'm Olivia's husband and I'm, I'm also on the podcast. And um, yeah, Olivia is like definitely the most prolific dreamer of the three of us and I've always been really interested in dreams and you've tried to work on some other dream related projects in the past and stuff. And you really wanted to do this podcast, like you were excited to do it and you kind of brought us together. And I think when we started, we didn't really know what it was going to be. And like, we wanted to talk about dreams, but we didn't know if there was anything there, if dreams really meant anything, or if it was just, you know, kind of random stuff. We thought maybe it would just be like a conversational podcast. And like, I introduced the idea of like, looking into dream interpretation guides and stuff kind of is like a joke at first. Like I thought, oh, this will just be like a way to start conversations. It'll be fun to read dream interpretation entries. And like, that'll be like a jumping off point for conversations. But after we did it for a little while, we we found that we started to find that like every time we did it, we really dug into something kind of meaningful and we got into like deeper conversations than we were expecting to have. And like, we really pivoted away from oh we're just joking around to like every time we go into it we kind of have an expectation that we're gonna get somewhere (laughs) and that we're gonna we're gonna um dig into something meaningful because it's worked yeah we fully weren't prepared to like be doing group therapy in a public setting like this like that was not the intention we were just like oh let's talk about dreams but it really quickly became us like talking about you know personal (laughs) issues and like we kind of had to we took some time to like develop our format and like get comfortable doing that because it just became more vulnerable than we first anticipated so yeah there were a few early episodes that never aired and are never going to air because we quickly realized like oh no this is like deep in our psyches where these dreams are coming from i'm zach by the way the the other third yeah i've always been interested in dreams from like a a creative kind of standpoint like I think it's David Lynch like minds those dreams for for like creative inspiration right like I always thought it's a fascinating topic I didn't necessarily come at it from like a spiritual place like to begin with 
it's, it's going more in that direction for me. But yeah, I met Olivia at a job we both worked at and we worked early in the morning and we were, it was just the two of us in this, uh, like podcast radio kind of studio place. Um, it was mostly focused on like conscious kind of topics, woo woo topics for lack of a better word. So, you know, we'd come in super early and that's kind of like the vibe in the air anyway. And so we just started like telling each other about our dreams every morning. And that's kind of where the idea for like, Hey, we should do a podcast started for me anyway. That's really cool. So you guys on your podcast, you share your own dreams. It's primarily our dreams. Um, so far. Yeah. We, we have had listener dreams submitted, mostly people that we know. <laughs> uh, yeah. For any of your listeners who might want to send in dreams, we welcome them. Um, we would really love to be doing more listener dream submissions and yeah, anyone who's interested can send the, send those into the young and the restless at Gmail. I love that name, by the way. So clever. <laughs> Who came up with that? Victor. <laughs> nice. For this episode, do you guys want to dive into one of my dreams? We would We would love to do one of your dreams. I'd love, I'm always curious to hear more about lucid dreaming. And that that's something that I don't have like any kind of handle on. I think all three of us have at various points done it unintentionally, but the kind of like ability to have that control and, um, intentionally dive into lucid dreaming is fascinating to me so I'd love to hear more from you about that and I'd also love we'd love to get into one of your dreams and yeah when it comes to lucid dreaming you can ask me anything I love talking about it it's something that everybody can learn it just takes practice um, and the fact that you guys have all at least had a lucid dream at some point in your life you know you know it's possible it just finding what works for you really is what it's all about okay so the dream goes like this and I called it pizza box just because that was a symbol that I remember really well from the dream. <laughs> so it goes like this. I'm in another country walking on the street. Feels like Colombia or like a Latin American country. I'm going to meet up with this girl from TikTok that I follow. There's a lot of like bad people around like um, trying to like kidnap us. Like I get a bad vibe that somebody's trying to like hurt us or kidnap us or something. Um, they all speak Spanish and I noticed that they're like trying to plot like with other people around the vicinity to like get us for something. Um, so I, I noticed that and, and I go up the stairs into this restaurant and I just don't feel safe. So I tell the girl, like, let's get out of here. You know, I see some policemen around and some cars. So I'm like, OK. And the police have like bikes and cars and trucks and stuff. So I go to them and I explain the situation like, hey, I don't feel safe. These people over there are sketchy. And they're like, okay, we'll protect you. Don't worry. And one of them is carrying these three pizza boxes, like a stack of pizza boxes. And he's like, don't worry, I got it. And he does something with the pizza boxes. I can't remember exactly what, but something about the pizza boxes makes me feel like, oh, we're safe. We're good. Like he's got it under control. <laughs> um, he's securing it. Like the, the bad guys are away from us. And so they loaded us up onto this truck and they take us to some safe house somewhere. And so we're supposed to stay there overnight. Um, and in this safe house, there's other people there that were all like eating dinner at this big table. And I'm just like on edge because I'm in an unfamiliar place. And I have a feeling that those like bad guys can still come find me for some reason. And I just don't trust these people either. So I'm like, let me get out of here. So I decided to leave and I walked out. And at this point, I'm kind of lucid. I'm not fully lucid. The lucidity is a spectrum, right? Um, so I'm semi lucid. I kind of am aware that I'm dreaming and I have some control because I choose to fly around and decide, okay, in order to continue this dream story, I want to be in a better environment. So I made the conscious decision to pick a house that I wanted to go to. I was like, I want to go home. Um, but I didn't go to the home that I know in waking life. I picked some random house in the town that I was flying around. And I was like, this one looks cool. And at first I was like, eh, it's kind of ugly, but it'll do. So I go into it. And then once I land, I'm no longer lucid. I continue the dream story thinking it's waking life so much that I'm like I have these roommates in there and um, I felt like I was in college um, it felt like I was in school of some sort and this was like my college roommates kind of thing like a dorm but it was a house um, it was a little ugly there was like some 
a lot of things around. It was kind of like messy, the house. And I start telling my roommates like, oh, I had this crazy dream just now. Like these people were trying to kidnap me. And I start telling them what happened as if it was a dream that I was lucid in. But I was still in the dream. So it's kind of funny. Um, so I explained it to them and they're all like empathetic and engaged. They're like, oh, wow. You know, tell me about the dream, helping me work through it. You know, like, like a dream friend would. Um, and they have some friends over my roommates and they're making some sort of garlic on the stove. I don't know. It looks cool. Just random little details that I remember. I don't know. I always like to notice things that I remember. And they also, um, I even told them in the dream, like, yeah, I'm so glad I got lucid. Like I haven't been smoking weed. So I remembered more dreams. Like, you know, so it's funny. And there was also like a pretty little Buddha statue and we're getting ready to go somewhere. And the conclusion of this was that I felt safe with them. Um, so that was the dream. That's so ripe with symbols. Um, yeah. it's, it's interesting side note. I have recently been doing this thing where I will have a dream and then I will immediately dream of telling the dream to somebody. And I think that that's a product of just doing dream work and coming on a podcast and talking about dreams. Did you notice that happening to you more like as you were talking yes. to people? Yeah. yeah, I'm always excited to tell people and all the time I'll be writing my dreams down or telling somebody, but still in my dream, like my mind is just so ready to like tell somebody about it. <laughs> yeah. I also find I remember them better because I yes. like did the dream and then I told someone the dream and it kind of like eliminates that need to like write yeah. it down right away. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. I remember more details because I talked about it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. It's like a little hack. Yeah. Do you uh, fly away a lot when you're lucid dreaming? Yeah, I do. I love flying because it's fun. But also if I don't like the scene that I'm in, I'll just fly to a different location. That's so funny. Yeah, I was Olivia gonna ask the same the thing because yeah, that's like Olivia's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a thing that I do. I yeah, and it's always like a semi lucid experience. Like I'm not fully. Oh, and usually I'll land somewhere, and then it, the dream will continue, and I won't be like lucid. But when I'm flying, I'm kind of aware of what I'm doing a little bit. Yeah, that's so funny. I've I've never flown in a dream, even when I've been lucid. And Olivia had a dream a while back where she w became lucid and I was with her and she wanted to fly somewhere and she tried to take me with her and I couldn't do it. Even in her dream, I can't fly. Sure and I couldn't fly because you couldn't fly in right. that dream. <laughs> you had to ditch me. Oh, sorry. I'm just jealous of people who can fly in their dreams. or do. I've done it like a couple times and it's like, I don't know, it feels exciting. And, you guys and... fly like horizontal or like with wings or what's your method? Um, I'm usually flying horizontal it, or like it's kind of like swimming in air usually like I'll kind of launch off and be able to swim up and then I can kind of glide every time I've ever done it in a dream it felt like um really uncontrolled like not like a bird that like knows how to fly but I feel like I feel more like a frog that jumps like way too hard and like isn't coming down and is like oh shit I'm flying now and, and it's like real erratic and scary yeah, there's definitely an element of like confidence to it because um, sometimes if I'm not comfortable in my flight or I feel scared that I'll go too high or something, I'm like, I can't control my flight very well. And I, you know, so I feel like a lot of it, like anything in in lucid dreaming is kind of about confidence. Yeah, I've heard that because I've, I went through a period of time in high school where I was really into trying to lucid dream and like, you know, was reading books on how to do it and like practiced. Only a few times ever did it like, work and then from there it was really hard to stay lucid because i would like get scared or embarrassed or something that you don't need to feel in a dream because you're not there's no real threat I, either it, it, i would wake up or it, i would unlucid yeah for sure it's lucid dreaming and then there's dream stabilizations like the whole other ball game i'm not familiar with that term dream stabilization yeah so it's pretty much the concept of becoming lucid and staying lucid like Zach was saying, and it's not, you know, it's quite hard. A lot of people will have lucid dreams, but they'll only last a few seconds. They'll get excited or they'll wake themselves up or whatever. Mm. Um, and it's really about staying calm. There's a lot of different little um, things you can do, mostly regarding just focusing on your senses, like really being mindful, taking in any textures of the dream and like really grounding into your dream body um, and, you know, staying calm, not letting yourself get emotional or scared or excited. Um, and then I found that that helps the dream last longer and you really feel more like grounded into the dream. Like the dream instantly gets more clear and more stable and you feel like you have a grip on it. So it's quite a good practice once you become lucid. 
That's so cool. Yeah. Olivia and I have been talking about mindfulness a lot recently, especially in relation to we're, we're uh, expectant parents uh, that's on the horizon. And yeah. we've been talking about like, we, we need to develop a mindfulness <laughs> practice to be able to handle the, the, the challenges that are coming our way. So do you have like kind of a dedicated mindfulness practice and has it like affected your ability to lucid dream? Most definitely. Yes. I just started meditating more recently. I've been trying to be consistent with it. Um, but I've always had this practice kind of that I incorporate with reality checks, which is kind of taking moments throughout the day to be really mindful about like what I can see, feel, hear, you know, my mm. senses. And I really just take them in for a moment and kind of like have a little stop and smell the flowers kind of thing as often as possible. Uh, and that has helped me lucid dream significantly because that's kind of the same mindset behind lucid dreaming, like that thought process of like, okay, I'm here, I know where I am, I'm calm, I'm lucid. So it's, you know, that moment of lucidity and waking life definitely has carried over. That's really interesting. So I don't know um, what your approach to dream interpretation generally looks like, but ours is like kind of a hack job of like a few different tools. We usually start with uh, dreambible.com, which is a very, very poorly written <laughs> dream dictionary that is often Spookily. very insightful. Yeah, yeah. it work really weirdly works very well. Um, yeah, that was the one that when Victor said we started using it as a joke, it was, it was especially this one we thought was going to be very like a, like a comedy goldmine, but and that was it. And then it, we keep using it because it turns out to be it's an oracle uncanny it's yeah. incredible <laughs> and we cross yeah. we cross referenced it with a bunch of other i remember on one episode you victor and olivia had like a stack of like six books on like dream interpretation from like different cultures we like cross referenced it with the the dream bible and it, it seems like there's a pretty um there's some kind of ubiquity to dream symbols like most symbols seem to mean the same thing in like pretty much every uh tradition of dream interpretation Interesting. I'm excited to dive into it. I trust y'all and your process. So I'm, you know, I'm here to learn too. So yeah, tell me, what does it mean? What does my dream mean? <laughs> so I, I know something that's helpful is to get a little context for what's going on in your, in your life. I don't, what do you guys think? Should we start there or should we start with the symbols and then get into context? Yeah. So we could either read you a couple symbols and you let us know if something hits and like maybe we can talk about how that relates to what's going on with you or we can approach it the other way and, and talk about what's going on in your life and then try and relate it back to the symbols do you have any like immediate feelings or reactions to what what this dream might be tied to in your life yeah yeah that's a, that's good, a good place did say. you have any ideas yeah you know i, I have some thoughts so I just traveled to Colombia recently. So there's definitely some waking life overlap there. And I'm always, when I'm traveling out of the country, I'm very aware of my surroundings, you know, trying not to get kidnapped, that kind of stuff. So there's some of that. But the fact of like going from not safe to safe is also very relevant to me lately because I'm in a process of like, you know, rebuilding my life after like a bad relationship. So I feel like I'm better and safe now. So might be something to do with that. What are your thoughts or feelings about this um, this unnamed TikTok per person that you were going to go visit? So interesting. She's cool. I've never met her in real life, but we are mutuals on TikTok. Um, and I've kind of just fought. We followed each other's journey. We went live together and talked about dreams recently. Um, and she actually does pretty well. So it's kind of like somebody I look up to in that way in terms of social media growth. And just as a person, I think she's really cool and really sweet. So, you know, we've become friends. It's still a, it's still a very new friendship. Like, I wouldn't say we're super close or anything. Um, but yeah, that's, that's quite interesting there. Like, she's, I see her as, like, successful and or on the come up, I should say, because she's growing her page as well. But she's very good at managing social media. So if you had to do, like, a one-word description of this person, like, first first thought about this person, what is it? good potential i see potential. a lot of potential in her you know gotcha yeah. in the dream when you were with her did you feel like she was as concerned as you were or did you feel like you were maybe in charge of getting you guys to a safe place 
Yeah, she was not as concerned as me. I was the one like, hey, we can't be here. She was like, okay. Yeah, that's like (laughs) relatable to me. I feel like in dreams, I'm often the one who's like worried about something and trying to like dictate what's where we go and how we navigate. So remind me who who had the pizza boxes? Was that also not as the police? But you also felt like uneasy around them, like they weren't totally safe, right? Not so much the police, but like the place they were putting me in and the people at that safe house. The police themselves, I was like, okay, they can get me out of this, but I don't want to stay with them all night type thing. Do and you the feel pizza any... boxes brought some sense of safety, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay. So you felt positively about the, the person actually holding the pizza boxes? Yes. That was like, oh, I'm good. They're, they're doing something right. Whatever okay. it was. And then you named your dream after the pizza boxes, so that seems like yeah. a good starting place sim- symbologically. Some... I do love pizza for the record. Let's I'm gonna hear crack the pizza this entry. Uh, do you want to start with the pizza entry? Yeah, yeah. Um first just just to really quickly recap kind of the the story of the dream, just for my own uh, like processing. Um you're in a foreign country, possibly Colombia, right? Um, you feel like there's sketchy people all around, like maybe they're plotting against you or something. You quickly get to where you're trying to go, which is to meet this girl. You tell her you're concerned. She's not concerned. And then a cop shows up with pizza boxes and tells you it's all going to be okay. Uh, And then you fly away. And that turns into like the cop taking you to a safe house. So safe or... house was the first, safe right? House. Yeah. First, the safe house. house. The safe oh, okay. house didn't feel safe, right? Right. Not really. It felt okay. safer than before, but I was like, yeah, I don't like. It. I want to go home. I wanted to feel like I was home. Gotcha. Okay. And so then you flew away and found a place that felt like home, and it also felt like college. Did you Did you know the people that were your college roommates? Were these like dream people? Dream people. I knew them in the dream. Like we were sharing memories and stuff, and we had plans, but I don't recognize them in waking life. So you you ended up in um, like a college home uh, and you were surrounded by people and you felt more comfortable. But then as that part of the dream went on, you felt less and less safe. And then you woke up. And there I was felt a safe towards the end with them. Uh, you still Once did. Once I okay. landed at the house, I was like, I'm good. Like these and people know me. The they, yeah, I was telling them. I was like, okay. these people know me. They're my friends. Like they have my back. I'm safe gotcha. here. Yeah. Cool. And then it ended at the uh, the dinner with those people. Yeah, we were like getting ready to leave, and then then I woke up. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna start. With, I've got pizza and boxes, so maybe those overlap or cross over in some way. To dream of a whole pizza in a dream represents situations where you are casually enjoying a satisfying and customizable experience, hanging out with other people that meet your expectations effortlessly. Taking time off to casually enjoy nothing, being a problem with whatever is happening with a customized experience. It's weird that that's what it's drilling in on. Yeah. Happy, lighthearted, shared experiences, hanging out with people, having fun that turns out exactly as you expected. There's a negatively section. There's a single slice of pizza. There's pizza taking too long to be delivered. (laughs) interesting i kind of relate to the like being around good vibes kind of people i've been hanging out with my friends more and like being i kind of see pizzas now that you said that of like all these individual parts of a whole so that's pretty significant to me i feel like i'm always a part of like a family and a group of friends so i don't know that's interesting though very I communal didn't see food the pizza. yeah exactly it is very communal it was the boxes though i didn't see the actual pizza the right. positively for boxes seems pretty relevant yeah um positively dreaming of boxes with things in them like pizza perhaps <laughs> may reflect a sense of closure uh, about having an issue feeling that you were completely finished with an area of your life having something all figured out fully processed issues or areas of your life that are totally unimportant to think about anymore so uh, you expressed like move, moving out of uh, like mm-hmm. a difficult relationship if that <laughs> That relates Good right resume. there for sure. Yeah. And if you put those two entries together, like pizza is all about, it, it was a very positive entry, right? And like, if you put that in with the boxes, it kind of points to like a, like closure on a situation and positivity, maybe moving forward. Some kind of community and 
or, or family or whatever you want to call it being like the source of closure or the place where you can find that yeah, yeah. perhaps I like that yeah I relate to that a lot my family I mean I'm really close with my family so they help me a lot just through anything I go through in life <laughs> oh this is interesting I looked up garlic because you mentioned something about garlic on the stove uh, it's a pretty long entry actually but one of the paragraphs says confidence about protection security or calling the police what huh. that's crazy that's weird <laughs> feeling that money protects you feelings <laughs> of certainty about controlling something powerful sensitive or dangerous the word confidence comes up like 18 times in the garlic entry so it's confidence it's very confident it's food protective is yeah. the first thing which kind of yeah. makes sense as a symbol, like you you think of vampires. And That's like, what I like... thought of originally, oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, well, I felt safe in that part of the dream, and the garlic is like a protective kind of symbol. But that's interesting that it mentioned police and everything. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the first sentence of the garlic entry is, to dream of garlic represents feelings of confidence that is protective. I like that. I relate to that a lot. I looked up um, attacked and kidnapped. That feels like maybe it's kind of getting towards how you felt about the the like aggressors in the dream. I don't think you were attacked. You, you had an anxiety about being kidnapped, right? Yeah, they were actively trying, I'm pretty sure, to kidnap me. Like they were like posted up at different areas of the, we were at like this outside mall kind of thing. And they were like talking to each other, like trying to, I don't know, corner me somewhere, but I noticed it and got out of it. Gotcha. To dream of being kidnapped represents issues in your life that trap, restrict, or distract you. A problem or negative thinking pattern may be diverting your concentration or attention away from more important issues or goals. Feeling forced to do something that you don't want to do. Feeling that everything in your life is going wrong. A moment of extreme stress or pressure. A loss of control and security. Negative influences in your life that may force their way into your life, making you feel helpless. Alternatively, kidnapping may reflect a situation that leaves you feeling victimized or that something's being done against your will. You may feel a loss of security, making others do something against their will. And to dream of yourself being kidnapped represents feelings of being forced to do something you don't want to do, feeling that your happiness or sense of stability has been stolen from you. Interesting. I hate thinking that like, oh, like, when am I going to not dream about this damn relationship anymore? But it still right. kind of relates to that because... There was a lot of things in that relationship where I did feel trapped and kidnapped and all that stuff and unstable and, you know, a lot of the things that you just mentioned. But then the fact that I got out of that in the dream and I got out of that in waking life is kind of a parallel for me. Something that has been really interesting in our journey with dream work has been witnessing the evolution of our dreams because we all came into this dreaming like at, to various degrees I, definitely Zach and I dream more than Victor but like all three of us have patterns and like very particular things that we dream about and they evolve slowly like and incrementally like depending on where you're at with a thing right so like for a, probably before you weren't having the like getting to the safe place right with this yeah. And yeah, I know it's like, ah, uh, this again, like we all feel that way. <laughs> every time we're, we hop on, we're like, maybe it's about something else, but it yeah, there's almost this, never is. <laughs> there was this weird curve where it was like, right at first, all our dreams went way deeper than we thought they would go. And we're, we're like, oh man, there's a lot to like, get into. And then like a few months in, we're like, man, all my dreams are about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I keep having work dreams. Olivia's on baby dreams now. Yeah, but for, at first it was like, do we want to have kids? That was where I was at when we started, was like contemplating if we wanted to. And then now I'm coming on 22 weeks pregnant and it's like all about, okay, we're doing this, but like now here's my concerns about the next step of it. And like, it's just going to go on like that forever. I know it is, but yeah. <laughs> I'm going to dream about our kids forever probably. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess it makes sense. That's the point of dreams is to act as our internal therapist for things we're going through. And like a good therapist, they're going to keep checking and make sure, hey, are you over it? Or are you not over it? Or what, you know, what progress have you made? And I'm interested, you know, also maybe another time to hear about some of your pregnancy dreams. I've done a couple episode actually on parenting and pregnancy and dreams. Yeah, um, I, I listened to those. Such they're a cool, great. such a cool topic. Yeah, it, it's really cool. I listened to the one with... um. Steve from uh, the dreams that shape us. It was really cool to hear other people's like dreams from when their babies were, you know, in utero. Because man, 
the pregnancy dreams. It's a real thing. They're like, I thought they were crazy before. <laughs> yeah, I guess like with this dream of yours, I would say the piece that I'm cur- most curious about is the middle location, the the second location that felt safer, but not not quite it. Because I think like I can relate. House. Yeah, the safe house. Do you have any ideas about what that might mean for you? Was there like a middle transitional period in this real life situation for you? Yeah, it it had a lot of like ups and downs before the final end of it. Yeah, in the dream, I was almost like considering like, okay, could I stay here? And I considered staying there overnight. There were other people staying there. They were looked like they were going to feed us. So I was like, okay, it's safe on paper, but I just don't feel right. I want to be in my own space. I didn't like the fact that I was with strangers. Something that um, has come up a little bit interpreting Olivia's dreams because she she has kind of consistently um, used like becoming lucid and flying away as like a tool in her dreams is that it is like an avoidant uh, impulse, right? It's like, your dream up till that point was trying to put you into a situation of something that you need to process. If it's like alarming enough to put you into a lucid state and then you choose to fly away from it into like a new scene or a new situation, it's you turning away from whatever that dream's trying to walk you through or whatever lesson it's it's trying to to give you. It sounds like, like my gut reaction is that um, there is something in you that's trying to process this feeling of feeling unstable or unsafe or whatever. And it's uh, causing you some anxiety. And so like fleeing to a safe place is maybe also reflected in like some ways in which maybe you're, you're not engaging with that in your day-to-day life or not engaging with that, like internally quite yet of like, maybe you're still kind of processing this big change in your life and it's easier to just avoid that and focus on the good stuff instead of maybe sitting with those feelings. That'd be my first gut The mechanism of that is interesting too, right? Because it could be like an avoidant thing. It could also be like pointing you, like this is where you, like you trying to tell yourself what you actually need to do, where you need to go, where you're going to feel safe and have the like space to process yeah because the pizza boxes it sounds like kind of symbolize like the protectiveness of community or the protectiveness of like um friendship right and then when you left this place you went to a place where people you love and trust and care about and you have like a communal experience with them like breaking bread with people yeah i relate to that a lot even the relationship aside, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I'm trying to make better decisions with who I'm around, like the energy and the people in my life. Avoid, like you said, like, I feel like when you were talking about the avoidance, I was like, dang, I got student debt that I'm like, not even trying to think about, you know, and things like that. Like, same. (laughs) Yeah, don't we all? (laughs) Were they having dinner at the safe house? Is that where the dinner was? Yeah, it was like a long table and we were all going to sit there together and some people were showing up and we were still waiting for people to show up. The dinner had not been served. I chose to leave before the dinner. Had I been more lucid, I would have stayed and explored without the fear, but I was still scared. So that's why I left. The dream of eating dinner symbolizes what you are thinking or feeling as you reach the end of a phase or last stage of a project, experiencing the end of a situation. So sometimes these entries will like, leave it open for looking back at how you were feeling in that scene. And it sounded like the dinner felt negative to you. Like you didn't want to sit down. Yeah. And it's interesting that there was another dinner at the end where I was excited about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was a dinner at the, at the, I didn't go to it, but yeah, but we were getting ready to go to it. That was like, okay. 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 So when you were sitting at the dinner with um, the, the cops or whatever, like, you said you you didn't feel totally at ease in that space and that's what kind of pushed you into lucidity and then you left. Do you remember what about that didn't feel right? I felt like they didn't necessarily have my best interest in mind. I felt like the people from the first scene could easily come find me and still kidnap me. I felt like some of the people there might even be in on it, you know? I was like, I don't trust these people. So uh, something you said a, a minute ago about like, you're in a place where you're trying to be more conscious about who you spend time with and 
this kind of feels like it's a reflection of that. Like you came to this place. If dinner symbolizes how you're thinking or feeling about the end phase of a project or the reaching the end of something. And this wasn't it for you. You wanted to be with better people and in a, in a situation where you felt at home and where the, the, the energy was right. And so you left and that's because that's not how you wanted to end the dream, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. Dang, you guys are good. <laughs> I always wonder where, like, it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing question that I have about like the specific imagery and places in dreams. Cause I, I wonder if like it started in, in Columbia and built the kidnapping scenario, you, it being your brain. I mean, <laughs> I wonder if that's what it did because you were just there and that is like a legit concern that was, you know, on your mind. And so just, you know, you were practiced at, at thinking about that and being safe in that actual place. And so your brain just started doing that in your sleep and then it turned into, Hey, while we're here, let's process X, Y, and Z. Or did it start with wanting to process X, Y, and Z and then use Columbia in, in this scenario in order to, to get you there? That's I, I always wonder about that. Yeah, that's interesting. I really don't know, but it, it really just makes it, it's so cool how the brain works. Maybe both. I don't know. Who knows? I always thought dreams were kind of a mixture, like your dream content is kind of a little bit of everything coming together to form the story of whatever the dream wants wants to talk to your subconscious about. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's both. I don't know which comes first, though. Yeah, you know, starting place is hard to... Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like, especially if I have a moment of like semi-lucidity, I, I feel like I can almost sense what my subconscious is doing or what my brain is doing. Like, it, it's, it's weird and meta to like watch yourself think. You know what I mean? You can kind of feel what the dream is doing at, at, at certain points. You feel like there are parts of this dream that are particularly unclear to you at this point, or is there, did this bring more clarity to it? Is there anything that's like left over that you're wondering about? Honestly, this brought a lot of clarity. I'm really happy that I picked this one. And it makes sense. Like what you guys are saying about like, you know, you're going to keep dreaming about stuff that happens to you, especially big stuff that's important. And um, I'm glad I shared it. It pretty much makes sense to me. Like, the feeling of going from unsafe to safe was like the main thing to me. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing that because somebody in the universe is protecting me with some pizza boxes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And if the place you end up still doesn't feel right, keep looking. Exactly. Yeah. It's good lessons in there. Yeah. Yeah. And pizza and garlic, they do go really well together. Like culinary. Yeah, I, do. I do love both of those foods. Okay, can we nerd out about lucid dreaming for a little bit? Yes, yes, yes. Ask me anything. What do you guys want to know? How do I do it? Tell me. <laughs> give me. Yeah. I want to I want to figure it out. <laughs> okay. So, here's my best advice. Do you guys write down your dreams constantly yes. like all of them? Okay, good. Okay. Try that's, to. That's step one. Yeah, as much as possible, obviously. So, you guys have a really good foundation for it because you've already had a lucid dream and you care about your dreams and you write them all down. Um, one thing that I really like to do is like find common dream symbols. So like in the past month or something, what's something that comes up often in your dreams? Um, I don't know. Let's say it could be an environment or a person or an animal, whatever it is, or it could be a feeling. Um, and then use that throughout the day to create moments of mindfulness. Technically, you could call them reality checks, um, but you don't have to just count your fingers or do the basics. It could be mental um, I like to just pull my finger just to do something to test my environment, just to say, okay, I'm not dreaming right now, because that comes in handy. And it's about quality, not quantity. So I'm not saying you have to do this 10 times a day or every hour on the hour, just quality. So when you do do it, ideally, when you see your dream symbol in waking life, tr make that a thing of like, okay, today, if I see, I don't know, let's say you dream of cats often. Every time I see a cat, I'm going to do this reality check moment. So like make that a mindful effort throughout the day. Like this, in order to lose a dream, you have to be thinking about it throughout the day and like set yourself up for the future. So every time you see that dream symbol, you think, okay, am I dreaming right now? Yes or no. And how do you know? Like when I say quality over quantity, I mean like 
really ask yourself, are you dreaming? And it can be like, what was I doing before this? And what am I about to do? Because in a dream, there's no answer to that question. You're like, I don't know how I got here, you know, but in waking life, you know exactly what you did today. So really try to prove it to yourself, even though it seems silly, because right now I know I'm not dreaming. I like to pull my finger. So like right now, nothing happens. And I just do this quickly, you know, but in my dream, it stretches like rubber and it's always like mind blowing to me. And that's <laughs> how I know I'm lucid. So you have to set yourself up to have that thought process in a dream. Like next time you're doing something and you're like, oh, let me just have my little moment of mindfulness in the dream. Something will happen that will show you that you're dreaming. You know, it'll act weird or different or, you know you'll just notice, especially if you've been lucid before, you probably automatically get lucid just by thinking about doing a reality check, but still do it, you know, make up your own, whatever it is that you feel like could work for you. And the other thing too, is start to set the intention, which sounds so basic. It sounds basic, but it is true. Like as you go to sleep every night, just even think to yourself, have a dream plan. Like if you were to get lucid tonight, like, what would you guys do? You know, what are your goals? Like, what do you want to do? Whether it's fly around, talk to somebody, whatever, have that in the back of your mind at all times. So when you go to sleep at night, whatever little night routine you do, just incorporate this in there. Think about your dream plan um, as you're flying asleep, you know, and it could be like two seconds of a thought, or you can do a full meditation. It doesn't matter. Just try to like pinpoint that in your head. When I get lucid tonight, this is what I'm gonna do. Having a plan is important for stabilization. So then when you become lucid you're not like oh crap what do I do uh, and you wake up you know you're like okay I'm gonna stay calm so those are like some main three tips in summary but I don't know do you guys have any questions about that or have you tried any of those things I have so many yeah, questions I had <laughs> my my reality check when I was like consciously trying to do this all the time in high school was every every time I went to the bathroom I would stand in front of the mirror and like analyze my face and be like this is what Zach looks like and, you know, down to like little details, like I have a mole on my neck right here. And then if I do, if that's not there, then I know I'm dreaming um, or whatever. I, I usually like look drastically different in the mirror in a dream. And that worked a few times, but then I would get like way too excited. I remember one in particular, I realized I was dreaming and I was like, I want to get big like the Hulk. And I started to grow. And then I like reached the walls of the bathroom and I was like, oh no, what's going to happen? I thought I was going to break the house and I woke up. Those big emotions like excitement and like, yeah. Uh, or, or fear or or shame or something that like always break it for me like how do you how do you control your emotions when you're lucid and stay you got to give yourself like a little pep talk like remind yourself like in that dream for example like okay I'm big even if I break the house it's okay like I'm in a dream nothing's gonna happen like I'll be fine you know you got to kind of remind yourself of that and sometimes you really just had to take a deep breath and like focus on something small in the dream. Like if, I don't know, whatever's around you in the dream, just really look at the details and the textures and kind of like zoom in on something to calm yourself down. And it helps to stabilize the dream and kind of just give yourself a little pep talk through it. I feel like what I did was I pushed my brain to the limit of what it was ready to do. You know what I mean? Like I, I had to suddenly imagine what it looked like to break a house in half with my giant body and my brain didn't was like well that was that wasn't in the plan I don't know what that looks like so I'm just gonna wake you up sometimes you just gotta see what the dream does see how it reacts and like embrace it and take it slowly maybe like one thing I just don't yeah you know it takes practice even now like sometimes I don't get the results I want or I wake up like it happens you know so don't feel bad or get frustrated with yourself just keep trying you know next time if you have that same dream be like okay this time I'm gonna try to shrink again or break free and fly or whatever you know what what do you use lucid dreaming for like I, I've heard people talk about like using it to do further like work with their dreams but I could also see it kind of going the other way where it like if you're in control like you're maybe not getting the messages that your subconscious is would would be sending you if you weren't lucid right Yes, I love that you said that. Because yeah, so it goes both ways, like being lucid, you exert your ego onto the dream and you do whatever you want to do, right? So sometimes you don't notice the narrative of the dream or you change it or whatever. Um, and of course, even so, sometimes the dream still has its own agenda that it still will show you. But it definitely takes away that like, um, subconscious processing more so and it's more so conscious experiencing, which can be its own form of benefits which is why you know we don't have lucid dreams every day but what I do it for I just sent you guys this link I actually have a list of the ultimate things to do in a lucid dream that I've been putting together people use lucid dreaming for all sorts of stuff 
me in particular, sometimes I just have fun and observe. Like it's really powerful to just explore and look at the dream without trying to change it or affect it. Like that has brought me a lot of more deeper lucid dreams. I like to also talk to dream characters a lot is one of my favorite things. Like I'll ask them questions. I'll ask them for advice. I'll ask them for, you know, uh, help me solve problems in my life. And I've gotten some good answers and some good advice that have actually helped me in waking life. So it also just depends on the dream I'm in. If there's something around that I want to play around with, I'll just play. It's like a playground. Um, sometimes I'll have a specific task in mind based on whatever's going on in life or just something fun that I want to try. So if I remember my dream task, I'll do that. I try to make it useful, but sometimes I just fuck around. Right. I guess I hadn't thought about before, like, while you're lucid, you're not like fully world building, right? Like you are lucid and aware, but your subconscious is putting all of the, all of the scenery and all of these elements in, unlike maybe you can conjure certain things, but like you, yeah. it would take too much brain power to like consciously create everything. So like part it of it is friends. still your subconscious that is building what's around you for you to lucidly interact with. For sure. And just because you're lucid doesn't mean you can control it. Dream control is a whole other thing. Being lucid just means you're aware. So you can be lucid and the dream is still going however it wants to go. Hmm. Yeah. The idea of at, talking to a dream character is so trippy and cool to me. The Like the idea of if we talk about the idea that everyone in your dream is you or a part of you. So the idea of like just directly asking your subconscious, why am I like this and getting an answer? That's going to be my new goal. Yeah, I like doing that too. I, I like to find out more about myself and like my past and my future and like, you know, just to see, just to see what I can get. I think of it as like experimentation and sometimes I get weird answers or sometimes they don't want to talk to me and sometimes they'll talk to me. So it really just depends. And I just encourage people to just, just see what happens, try not to get scared and, and keep that little mental pep talk in the back of your head so you can stay calm. What was the most, um, memorable or impactful um lucid dreaming experience you had where you like talked to your dream and got back like something worth remembering i love that question i actually published it in robert wagner's magazine the lucid dream experience um it was one where i was talking to a dream character it felt like a three hour long lucid dream like in dream time um and i was talking to this dream character who said he was like my friend from like other lifetimes and i felt like i knew him and he was telling me about like just how the world works and how we incarnate and how there's souls that like watch us on earth and they cheer us on. And they had these big TV screens. He was like showing me like the spirit world. And he was kind of like, oh, you're a human. So like be quiet, lay low. You can't be here kind of thing. I was like, yeah, I'll be chill, you know. And he was showing me these big TV screens and they were watching like the dinosaur era, not like a movie, but like the actual dinosaurs. And they were like, yeah, we can just watch any time and place on Earth, you know, your time, past time, future time. You know, we just see what Earth is up to and we're cheering you on and stuff like that. And it was just really deep to me and like really cool and contributed to a lot of my views on like life and reincarnation and things like that. So yeah, I love it. I love that dream. I called it the lucid lesson. I learned a lot in that one. Very cool. That like that ties right into something I wanted to talk about. We don't have to spend a lot of time on it if we want to turn back to regular to just lucid dreaming tips or something. But like do you like do you think that there that like dreams are totally just like a product of your own mind? Or do you do you feel that there is some kind of spiritual or cosmic thing happening with your dream experiences the big debate that's the big dream debate <laughs> i stand in between i think it's both i think that we have our own dream bubble of subconscious things everybody has their own little dream bubble but then they overlap to an extent and then we're all a part of this big collective that has dreams on a bigger scale and we meet up with I, I do believe that some dream characters are just your subconscious processing and some of them are actually sentient beings that live in other dimensions and cross through our dream space. I fully believe that. I don't expect other people to agree because it's not really going to be scientifically proven or disproven anytime soon. But that's just what I found from my experience. Like dream characters have told me things that there's like no way I could have made up at myself. I really like to stay open to that. Like I like to sit right on the edge and, and be like open to it being a possibility, but also like accepting, oh, maybe it's just my own mind or whatever. But um, but then you hear like really crazy stories of stuff that just does not 
does not make sense when you just look at it from the perspective of, well, it's all just in your own brain, you know? So I don't know. It's a crazy universe out there. Yeah. Your theory makes sense to me. I, I feel like whatever is about it being a little bit of both. I mean, so I feel like whatever is uh, out there, like beyond the veil or whatever, our brains are like antennas for it, like receivers, you know, it's like physical matter, but it's receiving something that isn't. And that's what consciousness is. And that's where dreams take place. So yeah, that, that tracks to me. There is like a, there's like an ego trap of like, well, if you believe everything you hear in your own dreams, you're going to end up with probably a really, a really wacky and accurate understanding of the universe. There's, there's maybe not literally like a uh, dinosaur, big screen TVs or whatever. Like if you took that a hundred percent seriously, it might take you in a weird place. I definitely think there's an element of like taking information and interpreting it or projecting it visually in a way that our brains can process in the dream form mixed together with things we see in our life and our normal dream content, you know, like I take it with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, I don't take it literally any of my dreams really, because I feel like it's just kind of a way of delivering a message or, or a story or whatever. I always notice weird things, random things from my day will make their way into my dreams. So that kind of tells me like, okay, it's just putting things together so that I can understand what the bigger picture is here. Sometimes you hear these stories though, of like unexplainable things happening, like through dreams and like messages being delivered through dreams and like like information you couldn't otherwise have yeah it would be insane to like have just come up with off the top of your head yeah it's crazy i don't necessarily know if i've had like a really prophetic dream or anything but like earlier this year victor got a message this is a silly story but like he got an instagram message from an ex-girlfriend that he had not talked to in like a decade or something and she was like, hey, this is weird, but um, I'm a midwife and I had a dream that I delivered your baby. I, and we were like, oh, okay, like, that's interesting. And she basically said, like, you know, so, like, I don't know if you believe this kind of thing, but like, it sometimes that can be like a message or like that there's a spirit that wants to come through as your child. And I then immediately ovulated a week early and we got pregnant, like, immediately we weren't thinking of trying until that happened and it was just like that so gave strange me goosebumps. that gave me goosebumps <laughs> i believe that i do believe that babies choose their parents and announce themselves before sometimes not every time obviously but i believe that they have the power to do that to announce themselves i've heard some crazy stories like that that was really interesting that sounds like proof to me <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely weird yeah there was like a whole lot of other weird dream synchronicities that came up around that too but like yeah it was just so out of the blue and like we had been in a place where we weren't sure if we were going to do that anytime soon we were actually kind of in a place where like we would probably have waited but it was just so weird that we we're like let's give it like one try and like that was all it took <laughs> Yeah, it's like a it's like a self fulfilling thing. It's like the the dream became prophetic because we heard it and allowed yeah. it to be. You know, I don't know. But then also, like we had been spending so much time thinking about, like, well, are we going to do this or we're not going to do this? If we're going to do it, when's the right time to do it? And like, there was something uh, empowering about feeling like we were getting a message. You know? Yeah, yeah. It feels like your baby was a part of that process. That's so beautiful, honestly. Yeah, like that kind of thing makes me think like I've had some like spooky experiences outside of dreams where it's like I don't know how to explain that but like there's a weird thing going on there and like I don't know like we, we've had some weird experiences with like a Ouija board right it's like I don't think the Ouija board itself is like a magical yep. object right but it it's not that the Ouija board is like a magical object or that like it's that like the act of using it in a certain way like can like be some kind of opening for something I don't know how to explain what it is or I don't claim to like know anything about it for certain but like same with dreaming right it's like a state of openness that's like maybe there's like some way to allow other things through I guess if that makes sense yeah yeah I see it as like a tool as well and the more consciously and intentionally you use it the more you'll get out of it I think Something um, 
I'm not sure if Bean and Zach have experienced this, but I remember Olivia talking about she'll sometimes feel that um there'll be like characters or entities in her dream that don't feel like they are from her dream, like or don't feel like a part of her own mind. It feels like some other being. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, I have. It, it kind of is like an energy thing. Like I either feel like, oh, like I know you or oh, you're like not from here type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're not yeah. from around here. Yeah. yeah, I relate to that. Yeah, that, that particularly happens with like UFO dreams for me. <laughs> like I'll have like alien dreams where there's these it's usually cats. It's usually cats that don't quite look like normal cats. And they feel like very strong, like just a strong energy. And like, I feel like it's, I don't know, it's always kind of off putting and like, they're very unsettling dreams. But like, I always wake up from those feeling like that wasn't from me that wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, again, I don't know how to explain that. But it, it's um, an experience I've had. <laughs> like the hat man or whatever. Yeah. Remember that guy that kept showing up in everyone's dreams? Yeah, the hat man. And they, I don't know if it was debunked, but that wasn't like a short term thing. That's, that's like that's an, an ongoing, ongoing yeah. sleep paralysis. He's thing. an ongoing problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's still at large. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him too. And the more people like talk about it, the more people see him because you're already expecting it and scaring it and all that. It's funny. Yeah. It's like a tulpa. Yeah. I, I don't know that I totally believe what, what I'm about to say, but I think it's like fun to think about. But like when you hear about like, um, with ghost stuff or whatever it's like oh like different people see different things or um like sometimes like people will see just like an ordinary person and then like kids will sometimes see like something really crazy or whatever or like kids being more sensitive to it i like the idea or i like to entertain the idea that like your brain is seeing something or experiencing something that's like incomprehensible and it's trying its best to like present to you a thing that like makes sense you know it's like your brain kind of breaks wrapping around like an incomprehensible thing uh and so like maybe in your dreams like the rate like how you process like an incomprehensible uh like otherworldly thing sneaking into your your sleep is like you just like put it in an alien suit because you can understand alien but you can't understand like eldritch god like entity reaching into your mind i mean I that makes my aliens look like cats <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whatever um entity was showing you their their ability to like view earth through the ages like may, it may not have been like a cctv to them but they're like she'll understand it in yeah. these terms though right yeah right we really got into the weeds here <laughs> we have stumbled into dream work and like I've just found it to be such a cool and like empowering self-reflection tool. And I just like want people to know that they can do that. Like, you you know, like I feel like, you know, people have crazy dreams and they're like, oh, I always have these crazy dreams. But it's like you, it's really like your subconscious is really presenting you with like, you know, tools for doing really deep personal work and like you don't have to be a professional you don't have to do a lot of research like we fully don't know what we're doing <laughs> we have kind of figured out how to do it though like I want people to know that they can engage with their dreams and on a level that is um maybe should yeah yeah I do okay. think so like I I've gotten a lot out of doing this podcast with you guys and like it's there for you you know self-exploration really you know no expectations no rules just like having fun and learning about what your dreams are showing you you know so your y'all's podcast is called the young and the restless um i imagine it's on all the all the podcast platforms do you guys have anything in particular that you want people to know about yeah um yeah, so it's the Young and the Restless, and that's Young like Carl Young, J U N G. Yeah, you can find us on all the podcast platforms, and we would love to do more listener dreams. So if, if people want to send us their dreams, they can do that. Um, send it in an email to the Young and the Restless Pod at Gmail. Disclaimer: Like it can get vulnerable. Yes, yeah. you know, but we're we're 
sensitive to that. And we, uh, you know, when we have done listener dreams, we get some background information or, or some, some context because that helps interpret the dream, but then it also gives you a chance to think critically before we, you know, and we'll give you a pseudonym if you don't want like yeah your details out there or anything, but uh, it can get personal, but that's like the part of the, the reward of it. I, I recommend using a pseudonym just because you don't know like how you're going to feel when you're in the hot seat. But like, I think it has been like surprisingly vulnerable for everyone who has submitted dreams to us, but uh, nobody has had a negative experience. Everyone has been like, really, you know, seemed to have gotten something out of it. So like, don't be scared. <laughs> we'll use a fake name. It's good to encourage dream sharing. Especially yeah. with people that are going to help you figure it out. Like, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, uh-huh. it can be surprising when you, like, you know, we've had friends be like, this one was wacky. This will be fun for you guys to talk about. And then cut to, it's like, did your father make you feel insecure growing up? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's a lot to be gained from that, you know, growth-wise. But Yeah, and if you ever want to, if people ever wanted to just, like, share dreams with us without us doing an interpretation, we, like, are totally down to We do that a lot, actually. We end up talking about dreams without, like, trying to dig dig into the psyche too much but any interesting dreams that people want to share any dream content that people want to share with us or have us talk about instagram is where we're mostly uh active at the young and the restless pod which is also our gmail account i love the posts you guys make they're so pretty oh thank you that ai art has made a that really an yeah. easy process so yeah. <laughs> the album artwork though the that was all olivia she drew that from from memory right oh wow yeah oh that's pretty is that that's y'all's faces cool yeah well i'm so happy that y'all came on here to talk to me i'm honored and um i learned a lot actually i really did awesome and we're awesome. i'm excited to uh, try some lucid dreaming i'm gonna i'm gonna try and jump into that i'll yeah, let you know how i'm that happy goes. to help <laughs> feel free to like message me and update me or have any questions and uh, i'm happy to give more tips too you know those yeah. are just my starter tips so try those and see how it goes yeah, i want to talk to these yeah. dream characters yeah, yeah. have yeah. a dream really plan start about thinking that. about yeah. it what are you going to say like make it specific like what are you going to say what are you going to mm. ask them like specific dream plans yeah i really thank you for having us on this was great yeah this was really fun thank you so much Thank awesome. you. Y'all have a good day. You too. Have a good one. Great meeting you. Bye. You too.